Hey folks, thanks for joining. My name is Chris and in this video, we're gonna go over how to send a trading view alert to Telegram. Specifically, what I'm gonna go over in this video is how to send indicator alerts, strategy alerts, as well as price alerts. And after watching this video, you should have a very good understanding of how sending alerts from TradingView, one of the world's most popular charting platforms, to Telegram, one of the world's biggest messaging applications, works. So I really hope you guys get value out of this. Let me know if you do down below. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm gonna provide multiple references, like a web page guide for this. If you guys are subscribers of my channel, you know that I released a video on how to do exactly this about a year ago. And in that video, it goes through the step-by-step -step guide on how to set up the Telegram bot and then how to get the alerts sending from TradingView to Telegram. This video is a part two to that video because I'm going to dive deeper and show how to do indicator as well as strategy alerts and talk about a few of the additional limitations that exist with TradingView. A reminder about this implementation is that this implementation has no middleman. So these are alerts sent directly from your TradingView to Telegram. You don't have to rely on a middleman server. However, that being said, I personally believe that if you were to use your own middleman server like a web application or a Flask application, you could actually simplify this process quite considerably and customize the alerts a little bit better because your Flask application will be the application responsible for parsing the text sent by TradingView and then converting that into a message format that the Telegram bot API accepts. However, in this video, we're not gonna go over how to do that. We're gonna go over sending directly from TradingView to Telegram with some of the workarounds that I've developed. So thank you for watching. So some of the reasons why you'd wanna use this, of course, number one is that you can send alerts to your Telegram channel or to groups or to notify your users or your friends about different alerts taking place on your TradingView account. You might have a specific strategy or a proprietary indicator that you wanna notify your users of whenever there's a trading opportunity. You can use this method to do that. Another reason is because Telegram is an extremely fast messaging program. So whenever one of these alerts get triggered, it sends the HTTP request to Telegram servers and the messages come through almost instantly. They take a second or less. Another reason why you'd want to use Telegram is for organization purposes, because you can directly target which chats you want to send the alerts to. You can send them to group subtopics. You can configure different alerts to send to different chats or different group subtopics or channels, which can result in better overall organization as compared to emails, where everything's going to be just flooding into your one inbox. Let's talk about some of the requirements for this. Of course, you need a TradingView account. When you go on TradingView and you select an alert and you go to the notifications tab, in order to enable the webhook URL, which is necessary for this implementation, you need to number one, enable two-factor authentication for your TradingView account, which actually requires you to have a paid TradingView plan. The good news is, is that we're pretty close to Black Friday now. So if you guys were planning on adding months to your TradingView plan, do it through the link down below. And it also helps support this channel too. Um, another piece of good news is that you don't need a premium TradingView account. You just need the lowest paid plan they have, which is essential for the webhook URL to work. So that's fine. I'm actually on an essential plan right now just to show you this. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick example of a Telegram alert here from TradingView, check it out. So I'll go over to TradingView and I'm gonna do an alert on the RSI indicator. Okay, so here's an example of an RSI alert that I triggered earlier. I'm gonna reuse it now. Um, I'm gonna set the condition to be when the RSI is greater than 43.36 it'll send the alert. I'm pretty much ready with this alert, so I'll click save. It's active and it's triggered right away. I'll go over to Telegram and there's the alert that was just triggered here. Relative strength index greater than my number, symbol, current price of the market and the indicator value as well as a link to the chart because there's no way of providing in a dynamic screenshot of the trading view chart. It's just not supported in trading view. I went over that in my other video. But if I do click on view the chart here, it'll open up a new link for the chart. Um, and I basically passed in the link to my own trading view chart there. And you would do that with your trading view chart. Now these alerts work very well, though they do have some limitations. So let's talk about that right now. So the first limitation is that alerts can only be sent to one chat from one alert. So you can't have an alert that notifies multiple chats at once, for example you can only send one alert to one chat. The next limitation is that it's necessary to get the Telegram chat IDs manually using Telegram web version A. There's no way of dynamically knowing what the chat ID is based on the chat title. You have to use the method I showed in the previous video on how to get the chat ID on Telegram, which is a bit of a process, though it doesn't take that long. You just go over to Telegram web and then you use the number in the address bar to get the uh, chat ID basically. 
The next limitation here is that there's no functionality for sending the live chart photo from TradingView. A workaround is to pass in the link to the TradingView chart, which works okay. I already showed you how I'm doing that. The next limitation is that it's necessary to configure and edit the JSON text format yourself. And the good thing is, is that I'm providing at least four examples to you guys in different formatting methods, including HTML and Markdown formatting. So you guys should be ready to go just using the examples I have, and then you can just modify them um, to, to suit your needs. And then of course, like I said, it's better to run a web flask application, which can handle the text directly from TradingView, um, because there are some features in TradingView that get disabled when you change the alert text to your own custom message. Like for example, I'll display you that limitation right now. If I go ahead and create a new RSI alert here, and then I go into edit that RSI alert, um, one thing that TradingView does when the text field is default is that whenever you modify the value and the condition of the alert, you can see that it also changes the message text here dynamically. Now, what's really a little bit annoying is that as soon as you add any text to that message box, like if I just skip a line, even if I just press skip a line and don't do anything, if I try and change the value now, you can see it's no longer linked. As I'm changing the RSI value to trigger the condition, it no longer moves that value in the message box. So in my opinion, that's something that TradingView could improve upon. And another thing Thing that they could add is, for example, when it comes to the special placeholders, such as passing in the close price, the time, or the plot value of your indicator, they should add a placeholder for what the condition is. So they should add a placeholder called condition that basically encompasses all of this information, which would essentially be this text string right here. That way, we could have our custom uh, text body like this, and then we could just use a placeholder that says condition, and then that placeholder would basically pass in this text field and it would allow us to pass in the dynamic condition. So if someone goes in and creates an alert, then goes in and changes the condition to something else, our alert is gonna know what that condition is at all times because it's being dynamically changed. Whereas right now, this is not supported. You have to actually write your condition into your alert text. Once the message text here becomes unlinked, from you modifying the values here, there's no way to make them linked again, except by deleting that alert and starting a new one. So that's a bit of an annoying limitation in TradingView. Okay, so let's go ahead and show a few examples of strategy alerts and indicator alerts. Okay, so in the description of this video, I'm gonna put a link to a web page that I made on my website that's gonna contain these text body examples so you can directly copy and paste them into your own text file to use them with your own TradingView alert. So I'm gonna start with this one right here, which is an indicator alert using markdown formatting and it's gonna be sending to a group subtopic on Telegram. If you guys don't know what a subtopic is, it's that on Telegram, you can have a Telegram group, for example, this alert testing group, and you can see there's multiple um, subtopics within that group. This is how subtopics work. Um, if you look at the address bar, you can see the minus and then the number all the way up until the underscore. That's the chat ID of the group. Now, if it's a group that has subtopics, everything after that underscore represents the number of the subtopic. This is the chat ID, and then two would be the subtopic topic ID. So if I go back to my text file, you can see that I'm sending it to that chat ID. And then the message thread ID represents the subtopic ID. I put it at two in this case. And then the text field, this is where you're gonna customize it. And this is where I wish that trading you had a field called condition. Uh, that way we didn't have to write any custom text here. Like for example, I wrote RSI indicator alert. But in reality, this should be something like this, where we do, you know, condition and trading view has the dynamic capability to pass in whatever the condition for our alert was into that text. So that way we don't have to type anything and everything's gonna be automatically done. And we can use this exact format for multiple or any indicator alert on TradingView and it would kind of save us a lot of time and trouble of having to type things in manually, okay? But for now, I'll leave it as RSI indicator alert um, and maybe I'll change it afterwards. So that's what the format of it looks like. I'm gonna directly copy and paste this to my clipboard. What I'll do is I will click on the plus here where people normally go to set up alerts on TradingView. And then I'll add alert on my EMA right there. So it creates a new alert on the EMA, but what I'm actually gonna do is go in and adjust that alert. So I'll double click on the alert line or I'll click on it here in the list of alerts. And then what I'll do is I will paste in my text that I copied to the clipboard for my text file. And also what I'm going to do is change the condition of this alert to be 
less than, just so it's an alert that triggers right now. So I'll be EMA is less than $6 or something. And then I'll remove this text from the top. And then this is where I'm gonna go in and customize this. And I'm gonna do EMA alert, or just write EMA alert. Uh, but in reality, it should be the condition. It should be EMA nine is less than value six. That's what should be there in my opinion. If you don't give it an alert name, then you just see the whole, you see the message text um, on the line of the alert. But if you give it an alert name like this and then save it, <clears throat> you'll see the you'll see alert name on the line of the alert if it's inactive. It got triggered and if I go to Telegram and then I go to my alert testing group, you can see there's my EMA alert that just got triggered. Indicator value, that's the value of the EMA that I'm passing into the alert body. That's the price of the market and that's the symbol. And then I have the link to the chart right there. Now, once you have alerts that you've already used, you can double click it and then resubmit it if you need to, which is good. Let's do an example on the RSI indicator. Let's say I do an RSI uh, oversold alert. So I come down here on uh, 30, let's say uh, 2963, doesn't matter. I'll add an alert on RSI 2963. There's the alert, it's active. I'll double click to go into there. I'll change it to less than 2663. And then what I could do is go into my other alert, copy the text body there. I did control A and control C, paste it into this RSI alert. And then I could take this alert text that it generated for me automatically and then paste it where I have EMA alert like that. And then I have the relative strength indicator less than 2963 on TON USDT. And now I can save that. And now I have that RSI alert that's active. And you can see if I hover over it at the bottom, you can see it gives us the entire alert text for that indicator. Now there is a way to make this disappear so it doesn't display your chat ID. If you double click and go into the alert settings and give it an alert name, just say RSI alert. And now it'll say RSI alert on the line rather than anything else. So if I move the alert up, I'm modifying the condition of the alert. However, the text in the actual alert body that I put didn't get modified. Okay, and I actually forgot to remove this part of the message. So I'll just remove that part. Remember, you have to have the, uh, the message has to start with a curly brace and end with a curly brace, okay? You shouldn't have any text above that or else it'll be invalid. Um, so obviously, because I changed the condition of the alert, the text that's in here now is no longer valid. I wish we could get a dynamic condition there. But what I'll do is I'll drag up this alert so it triggers now, so it's above the current value, and it's just been triggered. For some reason that didn't work, but the reason is now is because I'm looking at the alert text and I can clearly see that there's a text here at the top which is invalid, so I'll remove that. And then I'll send it again, put it a little bit higher so it triggers now. And there we go, there's the RSI indicator alert that just came in. Now, one thing to note is that when you're working with certain indicators, you have to check which plot value you're passing into the alert. So in this case, we have indicator value 50. I'm not sure if that's accurate. Um, and the way you check that is by going into the alert. Under the condition tab, we first see which indicator it is. But then in the second box, this is the plot value. So the first plot value here corresponds to plot value zero. So in our alert text, you can see where I'm writing indicator value is equal to plot one. That's actually incorrect. This should have been plot zero because plot one would be the plot, which essentially is the middle line on the RSI, which is not correct. But if I put it on plot zero, then it'll give us the actual RSI number. So that was incorrectly set. So you have to make sure you're putting in the right plot value to the uh, indicator alert there. And now if I resubmit this, see if we can get it to trigger. Okay, that's been triggered. And this time, it should have given us in Telegram the actual RSI value, which should be 6339. Let's go look now. And there it is, indicator value 6339. So that's an example of making sure you're putting in the right plot value into the indicator field. Okay, let's do some examples with strategy alerts now. So I'm gonna take the strategy alert HTML formatting uh, text and I am going to copy it to the clipboard. Then I'll go into trading view and I'm gonna add a strategy to this chart so I'll go to indicators, technicals, and I'll add a simple bar up down strategy. Now that the strategy is on the chart, uh, change the time frame if you need to, because depending on the time frame, the strategy responds differently. So let's say I do a three minute, and let's say I do a one minute time frame. And now I will select right next to the strategy name. We have the settings as well as the add alert to the strategy. I'll add an alert to it. So under the condition tab, make sure it's set to your strategy right here. The next thing I'll do is I'll actually paste in the text from my other thing. And then 
grab this text here that's called bar up down strategy. I'll put it right here where it says bar up down strategy and it's actually already there, so it's no problem. So I'll remove the text now at the top that's not part of our um, text body field and I'll name this strategy alert and I will create that. So now the strategy alert is active and we're gonna wait for it to trigger something. So basically this strategy alert is gonna trigger whenever the strategy generates a buy or a sell signal. So in the past it would have generated one here, it would have generated one right here. So we're gonna wait for this to happen now. Note that if you guys are still using the old format from the first video I put out, there is one change in regards to disabling the link preview. Um, because as you can see, if you look at my text, there's an option that I put in there called link preview options and I disabled the link preview. Uh, so when you get the message on Telegram, it doesn't put the preview for this link, which is going to be a trading view preview. Instead of disabled it, just so you get the option to click the link, but no link preview. So just keep an eye on that because the format is different from the old version. Now, if you run into a scenario where you paste in some text into your message body field and you run into an error where trading you saying there's a JSON parse error, then one of the best things you can do is you can simply copy all of it to your clipboard and paste it to ChatGPT or Grok on X and just say, hey, can you look at this text body and find me if there's a syntax error and normally they will be able to correct that for you immediately. So that's that's the easiest way to find syntax errors in, in this. Okay, don't bother trying to fix it yourself. You're gonna be looking through the text to find a missing comma or a missing semicolon somewhere. Now, another thing is, is that when you get Telegram alerts working successfully, it's recommended to disable app alerts on TradingView because your alerts now are gonna be all be going to Telegram. The way you do that is by selecting one alert or any alert, go to the notifications tab, and then you can disable notify in app. That way you won't get the app notifications on your phone at the same time as the Telegram on your phone too. So what I'm gonna do is actually go over to Bitcoin because it seems to be moving a little bit more. I'll create a strategy alert on Bitcoin. I'll paste in the same alert text I had from the Toncoin strategy alert and I'll name this BTC strategy, create it. And now we'll wait for something to trigger there. So now I have two strategy alerts waiting to trigger one on Bitcoin and one on Ton. If you guys get value out of this content, remember to press the like button and check out some of the affiliate links I have down below. One of them is to check out Interactive Brokers, my recommended stock broker, as well as to check out TradingView because at the time you're watching this, there may or may not be a Black Friday discount up to 70% off on all TradingView plans. So if you subscribe using my link, you'll get that 70% discount and it will also support the channel. And I think they give you one month free too. So thank you. Okay, so we just had a strategy alert get triggered here on Bitcoin. It was a bar up notification and I did get the notification coming into my other group because I had the strategy alert targeting this channel. Actually, this is a channel. And here it is right now. You can see 4.22 p.m. on both Ton and Bitcoin triggered the same strategy alert. And it tells you about a strategy position because those are the fields that I passed in. So there's an example of a strategy alert from trading you to Telegram. If you guys got value out of this, let me know with a comment down below. I really appreciate you guys watching. Check out this video right here if you want to learn more about how I help users transition from Thinkorswim to interactive brokers. And check out this playlist right here full of interactive brokers platform tutorials.